The inland port is an area where customs takes place for goods coming into the country and goods intending to leave the country. Right now we have ports on the coast, which many people know about. We don't have many inland that are west of the Mississippi. There's a lot of backlog in those out the coastal ports of ships waiting to come in and unload their goods. And one way to expedite and streamline that system of imports is to have another area where they can do that unloading of the cargo. By the creation of an inland port, which would be a federal designation, uh, the ships would be able to put those loads onto very long trains that would come into an area such as we're contemplating in Salt Lake City. And it would be an area for uh, distribution to take place to the entire region and also an opportunity for the region's goods to then get on those trains that go back to the coast and be exported to the rest of the world. Salt Lake City and the state of Utah have been talking about the creation of a port for years, actually. But the reality is that neither the city nor the state owns the property where the port is likely to go. That's owned by private property owners and it will probably continue to be so. So the port creation isn't entirely in our hands. Uh, in fact, it's not in our hands very much at all any longer since the state enacted some legislation that created an inland port authority board to oversee much of the development of the port. So there was a bill passed uh, near the end of the legislative session during 2018 that created the Inland Port Authority Board and gave them sweeping authority that um, in many ways put, placed the burden of development, the cost for development, particularly around infrastructure, police and fire, and other normal city functions on our taxpayers without any assurance that we would reap the benefits of the growth in that area. The city saw that the state was happy to move ahead with those plans. Um, we were receiving communications from the governor and others that they were ready to enable that board to do those things. And we seized an opportunity to negotiate a better outcome for our residents. That happened in a, with the result in a special session that gave us greater assurances from an environmental tax increment and many other standpoints that the city would be made whole in this process and not be violated the way that we believe we would have with the prior bill. The process that the city council undertook in negotiating with the state for a different outcome uh, resulted still in many question marks and we wanted to explore those more deeply with the community and with technical experts in those areas and so the city council held a series of fact-finding nights, three of them, and public hearing to receive input from um, economic, air quality, uh, community groups, and so forth about how they perceive the impacts and the opportunities of this legislation. We know that this isn't the end of the conversation with the state by any means, and the state has been open about anticipating multiple pieces of legislation probably for years to come to amend and tweak the port as it develops. So the city council very much wants to be at the crux of those conversations with all of the stakeholders, uh, which of course includes many bodies and entities outside of the legislature. And we succeeded in, I think, holding those conversations. The result will be a report that will come out of the fact-finding nights that we will use for our own information, for public information, and we will offer it to the Inland Port Authority Board for their own uh, information and consideration. But as a city entity, we will be impacted by and hopefully have some impact on the development of the port. And in order to have an impact there and to ensure that we are impacted in the most positive ways possible, we have to have good lines of communication and a respectful dialogue with the Inland Port Authority. And that's something the City Council has worked hard to create and maintain and will continue to be at that conversation on behalf of our taxpayers and residents.